Hey everybody, it is time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 136. This is Twip. Hey, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. I am your host, Frederick Van Johnson, and here's my partner in crime. Mr. Troy Miller, uh, we're going to be stepping through the latest submissions to the Twip Pro community for this week's critique. The topic was open, open, which meant we got a lot of submissions, right, Troy? Right. <laughs> Whenever we do open, we get a lot of submissions. Did you see any that uh, that were particularly exciting to you this time around? Uh, yes. Yeah, there were, there were quite a few. I mean, we'll get into them, but I think that everybody was very creative in doing this. And I think it's nice that, uh, they took advantage of the open category. You know, I think everybody's been kind of waiting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which makes me think maybe we should do, we should do open more often because people tend to dig the open, the openness of open. Uh, every fifth, every, every sixth critique is open oh is it <laughs> so <laughs> i said corrected there we go <laughs> according right. to the sheet according to the sheet which is law if it is written so it shall be That's done right. <laughs> it is written yeah so if you want to know the next open will be november 16th <laughs> that's oh, the next okay. open category <laughs> so. so get your get your openness ready because that's that'll be good right Right. Get your openness ready. Yeah, exactly. Hey, that'll be that'll be our, our post election critique, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs an open category. <laughs> exactly. I hope it's not like a angst and angst photos, angst ridden photos <laughs> submission submitted. Maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it'll be happiness. Who knows? All right. Let's dive in. You ready to go? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Let's bring up the Twit Pro community like this here we go we are in the photo critique area of our little community i'm sorting by date created so last in is first to be reviewed unfortunately i hate that it works that way but that's just how it is uh jim peters just submitted one one hour ago look at that snuck in he snuck in under the wire snuck into the back of the classroom you know <laughs> inconspicuously uh uh, Galapagos Island Sunset shot with a Pentax K3i. Let's take a look. Ooh, very neat. I love that pier. I like I like the the, the wood hand railing. That feels very safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, go ahead and lean on that. That's that's a movie set piece. <laughs> right, right. So what do you think of the composition? I know you're not a big fan of things bisecting the image, the horizon line bisecting the, bisecting the image. This one is not doing that. It's more towards the upper third of the image. And we got a lot of foreground area in there. But for me, there's a lot of busyness in the middle. I know the subject of this is the pier. Um, and it feels like it's supposed to, it obviously supposed to be a silhouette. But there's a lot of detail in there. And I'm my brain is struggling like, where are those is that construction? Are they building the pier? Is this a rickety pier? Is it like what's going on? My brain gets confused. I don't know. What do you think? Right, right. I, and I totally agree. I'm looking at this and I, you know, it's like the boat, the bottom left hand corner, like those things. I, I don't think you need to be in the image. I think we could crop those out because the, the story really is where the sun is. And looking between those two vertical crane towers or whatever those are. I mean, that's that's really where the wonderfulness of this image really is. Um, and that's where the strongest part of the image is. And that's where we have our color and our light. So I, I would say if, if you crop it, you tend to simplify the image quite a bit and focus on that sun. Just bring our attention to the sun. We don't need the boat on the right or even those rocks in the foreground. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Cool. All right. Yeah, very cool. Jim Sunsets Peterson. are always good. Can't go wrong yeah. with a sunset. Right? Right? They are. Sunsets and silhouettes. It's in silhouettes and sunsets together win. Right. All and right. if they're black and white, it's even better. Ugh. I mean, we're not even going there. <laughs> All right. Next up is Timber Geek. Timber Geek says, wow, that looks interesting. Fire in a glass from a series of experiments with a glass paperweight flash in a box and gel. See first comment. What's the first comment? Oh, yeah. Oh, he gives an overview of this. Okay. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, look how he did it. Oh, cool. 
Look at that. Okay. See, okay, yeah. you guys can read that. Let's bring this up. Yeah, it's always good to experiment with light, you know, because you understand how it bounces and refracts and adds and, and you know, diminishes around its subject. And I, I really like this a lot. It's very abstract. Mm -hmm. I, I would maybe, you know, just to kind of confuse the viewer, right, just to kind of get the viewer thinking differently. I might rotate this 180, show it upside down or something like that so that that line doesn't feel like a base. Um just to get just to kind of get your brain offset but i mm -hmm. love the lighting i like how well i like it's it's done very well yeah yeah my first thought was jupiter when i looked at it it was like jupiter, I, yeah. either jupiter or a you know a weird alien sun or something it's, like, it's really cool i like it yeah yeah i agree just to, to add that interest and so your brain doesn't immediately understand where gravity is coming from especially in a shot right. like this invert it and then your brain has to be like oh what the what the heck's going on here does not compute yeah yeah, and then my only other suggestion is is that the very closest of the of the globe is not in focus. So you know something like this, I think you, you probably want to focus stack it or try to get a really really good depth of field shot. But depends on how close you are and what lens. You're at f11, probably not going to get a whole lot more depth of field. Maybe go up to 32 or 64 if you can, just just so that the front is in focus, and that's pretty much where you want to start. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but cool shot though. Cool. And cool experiment too. Like you said, experimenting with light. You know, I was shooting a lot this weekend and it's just, it's surprising how much you don't know, right? You know, I know a lot oh, yeah. about photography. I've been shooting for decades, but it's still, you know, light is still like a slippery pig in a lot of ways. Yeah, right? it's magic. It, it's really amazing. And it, and, it, and it behaves oddly sometimes. It behaves unpredictably. So the, the more you play with it, the better it is. I, I always think of, of light like water, you know, and if you could, sh if you could just squirt it at a wall, that's kind of what light's doing right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you get used to it so yeah yeah like they say you know who i forget who it was in the military somebody told me that the way the only way to get to be um a, a good or a better photographer is to get rid of the hundred thousand bad photos that are stuck in your index finger <laughs> so, <laughs> and the only way to get them out is to press that shutter button <laughs> that's how they that's get released. right that's right <laughs> All right, cool. Awesome. Raphael, thank you for the shot. Yeah. Yeah. Great shot though. I love that. Keep keep playing with that. Show some more of those in your experiment. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Speaking of abstracts, uh James Glenny is up next. James Glenny says Having fun with abstracts lately. Any guesses what this is? Oh. Looking at the thumbnail, I went, my brain went to waterfall. But looking at it closer, <laughs> it looks like like celery or some kind of i don't know i don't Bone? i don't know vegetables <laughs> i don't know I, I don't know i can't tell you um i think it's a i think it's a really cool study of of light and 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 shape and tone and you know abstractness i think that that's that's really fun to do um what i would suggest with it with an image like this is instead of just letting it run vertically through the frame and having dead space on either side because it is abstract you know you could fill the frame or rotate it so that you know it comes in diagonally or something like that um or crop it square with only a tiny bit of black around the outside or, or background and then mm -hmm. and then bring the tone down it feels too bright i don't know if that's you know, mighty usually doesn't make things brighter. It usually crushes the shadows and stuff. So I, I feel like this is bring the tones down, let the shadows go really deep, add more to the mystery. Yeah, I agree. Or just, in other words, pop the contrast a little bit more, I think. Well, uh, not really. I mean, if we pop the contrast, the highlights are going to overexpose in the subject. So instead oh. of popping the contrast, like I'm thinking the contrast slider. Um, yeah. Yes, we want to increase contrast by bringing the shadows down, but leaving the highlights alone. You want to leave the highlights alone, not not bring this, right. not pull it in both directions, drop the shadows, right. increase the highlights, which is contrast, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I right. agree. Yeah, our our contrast slider should not work the way that it does. It should be a dual point that we drag left or right and create contrast by favoring highlights or shadows, as opposed to just <laughs> separate them and destroy I the file. Curves, right? In, uh, Curves. In, in Capture One, right? Levels. Yep. yep. Cool. Awesome. 
Thank you, James Glenny. Yep. Love awesome. It. And Frederick didn't even mention the wonderful border, but I will. I was trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's, 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 the image just passed. The image just passed. We're not talking about the border. <laughs> you know you know what I feel about borders. See, that's, <laughs> see how that print? That has, a, it has two borders, and they're real borders. You can actually touch them and see the light cast shadows on the underlying print. That's what I think. <laughs> Troy's yawning. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know. I like real stuff. Real, real leather, steel, you know, not, right. not drawings of leather or steel. <laughs> all right. Moving right back into this. Um, all right. Amy. The next shot up is from Amy Brooks. Amy Hey, Amy. Amy says, I'm doing a photo essay called Monday Morning uh, and keep working on my espresso shot. Double meaning there. Would love photo critique feedback. Sure. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, very cool. Love that cup. That looks like a double walled glass cup, which I, I just dig that. That is just super cool. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I think I think in a in a shot like this, first of all, we were just talking about contrast, and I think this image uh is lacking some contrast with the shiny material on the coffee maker you need to bring those specular highlights way up not quite overexposed but you definitely need to bring those up mm -hmm. yeah i think that would yeah i agree I think that would yeah work. just the overall feel when it, when you when you look at a shot the it it your brain wants more contrast in this you know it wants it to pop just a little bit more but then on the other hand if this is in a series of photos that were designed and the mood that the artist is trying to evoke is sort of that muddled kind of you know this is monday morning you know <laughs> kind of feel yeah then yeah then it speaks the other thing is down the left side of the frame here there's that whole dark bar right which right. is not adding anything to the photo so i would have uh maybe punched in a little bit because you can lose a lot of the detail in this shot and still have it tell the story like you could punch in and show just a little bit of the hand and show these little faucets coming down and people instantly know what's happening um without showing all this metallic stuff and the black and over there so in a case like this i think less is more Right, absolutely. And, you know, just another thing, too, is is shift your camera to right and then turn it back to the left and you'll be looking into the unit more and you'll have less of that 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 dark edge. Also, you have a lot of reflections that you could use in this image, you know, uh, in the unit, right? Like I can see <clears throat> I can see an arm coming in. You know, I don't know what that little piece is called above the spouts, but use that you know lift the camera maybe try to see your hand in there a little bit better or maybe put something on the counter that is sort of a second tell to what's going on use the reflections you know hide things in there put things in there yeah very cool though yeah it's a good idea too for a series and i'm getting you know it's interesting that she said series because i i think the self-project series things are awesome because they, they right. you don't want to put yourself on rails, but, it, you know, nothing, you know, nothing has been hurt by a little bit of structure, right? Even vines on a lattice work in your backyard, you know, they enjoy having that lattice work to, to climb on, <laughs> but, but it's, you know, in, in two dimensional space there. So I don't know. I think I, I think I like the, the idea of giving yourself self uh, or giving yourself constraints to work under to kind of exercise mm -hmm. your the muscle it's like t like targeting muscle groups when you're exercising mm -hmm. absolutely yeah absolutely cool thank you amy look forward right. to seeing more of those right yeah all right there's your border Ernest is up next. He says <laughs> the golden hour all the best ah oh, and the silhouette too look at that yeah that's that is nice. just graphical that looks like that wants to be like a wall mural or something yep yeah i'm wondering i'm wondering if you know i'm just kind of playing with crop with my hand I, I i feel like the the right side of the image should be cropped just before that additional piece comes in on the right you know what i mean like either mm -hmm. take that piece out so that it just kind of drops off um, or crop it 
to where they just, it just sort of ends, you know, the end of the mountain comes down and then it ends. And that sort of gives us this mystery of where they're going to go. Yeah. Plus that, that little outcropping we see on the right, it's not sharp. So it, yeah. it, it must have been a, at a different focal plane than the rest of the image. So that's kind of distracting that it's not sharp, but I love the silhouette and how crisp mm -hmm. it is. And the cool thing about these silhouettes is you have a lot of flexibility to change the image, right? So that, that little oh, yeah. outcropping on the right side there, you could easily just sample a color up here and fill this whole area down here. Uh, uh, can you see my cursor? Yeah, this whole area down here on the right with, um, with mm -hmm. yellow, right? To, to draw the focus in and get rid of that sort of thing that's drawing us out of the image. Um, yep. you know, when I look at this, I, like I, I would have done that, I think, and kind of gotten rid of this outcropping here and this little weird kind of bridge looking thing there to make this kind of a precarious slope all the way down and yeah. then maybe even cropped it vertical so that, it, you know, your brain is like you're not wondering where they came from, all this stuff. You're more interested in where these two figures are going and they have to make it down this hill. So crop it like. Mm -hmm. like that right so you know that that way then you have kind of this descending horizontal or vertical line going down the right with people that look like they may fall down there so you add that bit of tension and you still have your yellow and black colors in there i think that that would been cool yep i agree i agree and then take some time and play with the different color in the background it's going to change the mood of the image you could go orange you could go blue and it's just gonna it's gonna make you think oh daytime morning evening light so just change that you can change that background color yeah play yeah with it. yeah that's easy right especially in capture one you yep. can just say yeah this color make it something yep. else make it something else yep yeah exactly Ooh. all right and that was Ernest, right Dang yeah it. thank you Ernest. all right next shot is from mark charrette Marks, oh, oh. Marks, <laughs> Marks says for fun. I thought I'd play in Joshua's playground today. He said this is a Monday yellow uh, cicada hanging on for dear life above an aloe vera plant up in the Blue Mountains uh, in New South Wales. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's a cool looking bug though, right? I mean, those, those are those are cool and they're big. So, yeah. you know, those are, yeah, huge. I would, I would definitely be photographing that bad boy if he was hanging around where I could. So I would too. He to, I, I would too. He needs to wash his face though. He's got like crap all over his face. Like what the heck? <laughs> it's just bad. I mean, <laughs> he's got like stuff over his middle eyeballs I, or I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think those are goggles, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Goggles? Yeah. Yeah. Those are flight goggles. That's what that is. Can you see the band around the back of his head holding the goggles on? <laughs> yeah. No, that's for his mask. He's wearing oh, his mask. Oh, that's for the mask. Okay. Yeah. It's Australia. So, you know. They, they, oh, yeah. They get... yeah. <laughs> He's, He's hanging bored because he can't himself. go anywhere. He's stuck He's there. socially distanced on that aloe vera plant by himself <laughs> with his mask on. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so sad. That joke would yeah. not have had any weight just a year ago, would it? <laughs> no, no, it would not. Uh, but now, now we have something new to play with. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do. I do love the shot. I mean, it's 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 a fun image. I think that you know some cropping and dodging and burning would bring the 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 level of the image up quite a bit, so we could focus in on our subject better. But. Uh, just knowing what this is and knowing how loud it is, uh, I'm just, I'm glad that it's in a photo. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But they only come around every now and then. So what's the, right. what's the, what's the window? Is it seven years, seven years, something like that? Yeah. But there's a new generation every seven years, which means that they come out every year. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that I, works. I don't know. Cool shot, though. Cool. I love the red beady eyes on there. You know, I would say I, I'd want it a closer crop, but I don't I don't know that you could crop closer on a shot like this unless you're trying to do a detail shot of a specific and you have the resolution in the in the raw file 
you know, you're trying to do a detail shot on a particular, like just his face or just mm-hmm. the detail of the, the wing grid or something like that, or just the hair follicles on the back. You know, if you want to do a, a detail study like that and you had the resolution to do it, but otherwise, yeah, I, I think I like this. I like the cropping. I like the fact that it, it does look like it's hanging on for dear life. <laughs> yeah, know? it does. Up yeah. There. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That thing's a beast. Yeah, it's yep. definitely cool. Yeah, the, the the challenge with an image like this is that you've got your foreground and your background are challenging tones, and it's hard to get that separation of your subject from the background. So, you know, getting in there and dodging your subject, bringing your subject up, and then burning in your background so that that dark aloe vera goes even darker, and giving some separation between the two would help quite a bit. Yeah. Yep. Cool shot. All right. Moving right along to Joshua Sommerfeld. And Joshua says, looking out, captured with his EOS RP. Let's take a look at this gator. What do you think? I love these shots. I like that reflection, that, that soft white, you know, just infinite background. Um, I think the lower left corner I would have fixed. You know, there's that that wedge of white. Maybe maybe it was a railing or a or a bush or or something that kind of came into the frame. So I think you could get rid of that. But other than that, I I really like it. I'm I'm challenged by whether or not it should be cropped a little bit tighter. I'm I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not exactly sure. Um, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Like I I feel like on shots like <clears throat> this that have these <clears throat> creatures that you don't see you know, in detail, especially not close all the time. I'll, I, I, off, I always want to get a little bit closer just to kind of see the detail in the eyelids, see the detail in the nostrils. Um, but like you said, on the other hand, you know, it, we know that this is an alligator and it's it, it, the, the artist clearly wanted to leave some space for it to move into. Mm-hmm. So the, he's obeying those suggestions of thirds. Uh, so it, it makes sense. I don't know. There's a different. Yeah. There's a lot of de- depending on the amount of resolution you had it again in this final file in the raw file. There's a lot of different things that could be done here, like even just the eyes, like just cropping in, just in this area, you know, just to show the, the eyes of this this animal, or something like that. But Troy, what would you do? So you mentioned this little white wedge in the lower left corner. How would you get rid of that? Would you select it and do a content aware fill fill in Photoshop, or would you copy? an opposing corner and flip it and put it down there or just clone it out? Um, I, I would try content to where fill first by grabbing content from the right corner and trying to clone it in there. If that didn't work, um, I would definitely just maybe grab the upper left-hand corner or the lower right-hand corner and flip it and mm-hmm. put it in there. I just think that it's, it's an, it, we have this beautifully smooth background. I like the ripples and the subtle reflections. I just think that corner wedge, it's kind of a trap. You know, it's got a, it's a bit of nothingness and it's soft. Yeah. And it, I, I think that it detracts from an otherwise very amazing image. I, I love the treatment. I love how I can see the texture. I can feel the texture, right? Like if I touch the texture of that alligator, if he would let me, I would, it would feel rough. And I think that's coming through in the image wonderfully well. So, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I, I cool. just, the more I look at it, I do think half of the top and maybe half of the right just just uh, i don't know i'd have to play with it a lot i do think it needs to be cropped like it's a little bit loose <laughs> oh did you show me i couldn't see <laughs> yeah. i looked up and i saw myself I'm like oh <laughs> i have the power to switch cameras i i do that i do that for er- almost every image by the way so that's cool cool i shot. know frederick can see me doing it yep i can all right. Thank you, Joshua Summerfelt. Moving on to the next artist here. It's Mr. Craig Colvin. Craig says, Stripes. This is a model in a striped Zentai suit. Whatever that is. Standing up against a striped wall that I made by putting black gaffer's tape on a white foam core board. See, that is just sick. That is cool. I love that he's just like like just making stuff and it like this you would think it came from a gallery at moma or something and it's some white gaffer's tape on foam core and with somebody in a striped suit that's just brilliant i love that yeah 
Yeah, it's wonderful. It's really, really cool concept. I really love the concept. Um, I, I would love to see a, a, a giant image of this, you know, so you mm-hmm. can really just kind of fall in, fall into the image. So the execution is wonderful. The the vertical lines are nearly perfect. It's cropped nearly perfect. I mean, I I can see you know some imperfection where the the wall on the floor. And I only say this because I'm nitpicking really. But I think it gives away some of the illusion if when you can see the floor and the wall seems meeting. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I, I would certainly go into Photoshop and I would affix where those aligned because yeah, I'm maybe. sure it's harder to do in, in real life because of, of, you know, the mechanics of it. Um, and other than that, there is a little wrinkle right at her waist um, right where her leg meets her 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 hip, there's a little wrinkle in the fabric, and I would fix that. <clears throat> oh, right in there. Okay. Yep. Look at that. Look at look at the ADD. You know, is that ADD? No, that's the uh, OCD. That's the OCD, OCD. thing kicking in. <laughs> but but when you you know when you have an image like this, and there's also a shadow in in the white space under her left leg, right in that center that feels unnatural. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you have an image like this, that just, that has so much symmetry and, and, you know, the, the, the balance of the image, it it really demands that level of perfection. Right. And I, I just think that, that, that going in and tuning those little things up would, would help so much. And I just, I just love it. I think it's cool. I want to see it really big. Yeah. Really, I love the concept, though. I love, I love the, you know, Craig Colvin and and um, Tim. You know, their their kind of their approach to DIY stuff. You know, and just sort of putting stuff together, and then in the final image, it just looks outrageous. I love that. Right. Right. Yep. This reminds me. There was an artist that would do body painting but but she would paint the the models into a scene Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you know they were they would be nude but she would paint them into a scene like sitting in a chair you could not see the model in the scene i just i just i just love that sort of that mix of art and uh visual you know yeah deception Tag, like 3D mixing uh, two dimensional and three dimensional type stuff together. Right. Right. Love it. Right. Love it. Yeah. All right. Craig Colvin, thank you, sir. Moving right along. Stephen Scharf is up next. Stephen says genre, photojournalism, accordion lady. An accordion lady uh, busking. I don't know what that word means. Busking with her granddaughter in Die Altstadt district in Dresden, Germany. Kind of want to hmm. say that with the back of my throat. Die Altstadt. <laughs> 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 All right, there you go. Black and white with a border and a key line. There you go, Troy Miller. Are you yeah. happy? Are you happy? Uh, yes, it's perfect. That's, that's Although perfect. Although I would that's... say, I would say that this printed large with a beautiful frame and a mat would make this feel like it's worth a gazillion dollars. You know? Yep. Yep. I, yeah, I can see, I can see this, you know, in a series. I just love all the storytelling elements in here. You know, the dog that's there, his <laughs> <Yep>. bowl. <laughs> yep. Um, there's like a food container sitting to her right. I'm guessing that's like a little food container sitting up there. You know, the the stool with the little bucket <clears throat> for change and the, the the sm on her granddaughter or the child that's there. I just I just think that's just, just a wonderful storytelling element. Even the white piece of paper, you know, laying on the on the floor there. Yeah. So. Yeah. It all looks it looks like one of those shots that you would you know, you'd discuss for an hour in art school or something, right? And like, the artist was thinking this, and the the stool is is at a thirty degree <laughs> angle because of. You know, yeah, it is weight. symbolic of the rebellion against the local. Yeah, exactly. The dog represents the angst of the community, and you know. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. When really it was yeah. a Stephen Sharp found a really good composition shot. He took it. 
right? And man, there's an excellent photographer and processed it. And here we go. Yep. Um, there's three things that I would probably, four things that I would probably fix. Um, the, the to the far left on that bottom pillar, that line, you know, the seam that's in the pillar that's right mm -hmm. next to the edge of the frame, I would take that out. Mm -hmm. I would also take out the white line that's carrying vertically above, we'll call it the trash can right above mm -hmm. that, whatever that, whatever that thing is, because it's a, it's a, it's a, an interruption of an, from the continuation of what the black element is there. And then the line above her head. I would take oh, that out. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. And if while you're at it, you could take this line out too, the one above the carriage, the baby carriage. You, yeah, you could. I mean, you don't need that there. It's certainly not very distracting, but mm -hmm. you certainly could. The other thing is, is on the far right edge, the lower right hand corner, there are some spots in the concrete that are right on the edge of the frame. Mm -hmm. And I'm always a big fan of there's there's a space before the photo actually starts, before the story starts, even though it is part of the image and we really don't want to encroach too close to the edge so that's why the lines um and some of the spots on the floors because it doesn't it doesn't touch the edge of the image can't but touch do the we edge want of the to I, I agree compositionally uh, all that makes 100 percent sense but in in looking at this through the lens of a uh, street photography or photojournalism shot. Like Steven said, this is photojournalism. Do you want to go in there and make any changes to pixels? Right. I mean, in, in photojournalism school, they taught us, you know, it, what you see is what you get. Don't mess with it beyond printing, which gets blurred in digital, obviously, but making substantive changes to the image, even those kind of changes, compositional changes that don't change what the image is trying to convey are frowned upon in photojournalism. It should be pixel for pixel what you shot. What, what do you, where do you fall on that? I, I, I think there's there's three distinct segments of what an image is going to do. There is the fully artist, creative, whatever, do whatever you want to do to, to, to sh tell the story that the artist wants to tell. Then there's the photojournalistic. Um, you know, whatever you capture in frame digitally, whatever photons you capture, you those are what you represent. Mm -hmm. And then there's then there's the the conveyance of the truth of the subject. And that's kind of in between because the subject, which is, you know, the, the woman playing, the dog, the the area, is not changed by removing a couple spots and a couple lines in the wall. The 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 honesty of the image is still there. So to me, it depends on what the artist wants to convey. I'm more interested in, in, for me, when I create images, it's about what is the story that I'm telling, yeah. and I'm not going for photojournalism. So. Right, right, yeah, and that's the key. If you're going for photojournalism, um, it, like if this, was a, if this was an image that was submitted to a photojournalism category at a, in a contest or something, and they somehow discovered that those lines had been removed, this would instantly be disqualified. For that. Right, as but it should if, be. Right, right. But right. if it's not, if it's just going into an art category or you know some other non photojournalistic mm -hmm. category, hundred percent, sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. You can put another dog in there if you want. Right. <laughs> so, yep. Yep. Yeah. And I, and I would I would even go so far as to say that there is a there is a level of of photojournalistic integrity where the subject matter is more important to communicate than the background. And if there's things in the background that are distracting you from that subject that maybe sometimes you need to take those out, right? Like mm -hmm. if there's a sign on the wall um, that is like a, a, an, an ad for perfume, right? And maybe you don't, maybe that doesn't convey the story of this woman, then taking it out isn't being disingenuous right. to, the, to the photograph. Right. Um, but yeah, again, but conversely, in true photojournalism, you right. don't have the you don't have the authority to take that thing off the wall, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, cool shot, Stephen Sharf. You rock the house once again. All right. Next shot up is from me. Oh. This is my little reason for being on the planet right here. <laughs> Cameron. That's gorgeous. <laughs> We shot this yesterday as we record this. We shot this yesterday. Did this you? Was a, nice. Mm -hmm. This was a first, the first the test photo session that I did with those new Godox 8200 Pro strobes. 
And this, cool. strangely enough, was only one of those. So this is a one light setup, one strobe, kind of in Rembrandt up into the to the um, to subject right, forty five degrees, and um, there's a reflector that's just right next to her shoulder there, that's filling in the the side of her face, and that's it. Just one light, one strobe, one kid, one reflector. Boom. Nice. I did I did have everything tethered. So I was shooting tethered into a MacBook Pro onto a Lacy drive. So and I did that specifically for her. I mean, in retrospect, I'm going to do that all the time. But for her, I did it so she could see the shots as they were popping up. And she was like, yeah, we had we had a great time just just so she could enjoy the shoot. Right. So she was seeing the shots pop up and she's like, oh, no, I want to put my hand on my, my chin. Oh, no. <laughs> I want to pretend like I love the pumpkin more, you know. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. So what do you think? What do you think of the shot as a portrait photographer? Um, I love the shot as, as, as a portrait photographer. I mean, I think that there are, it's a super solid image. It's, it's really great. And it really conveys, you know, sort of the innocence and the, the youthfulness that's there, which I love. I love that super calm smile. Like there's a little tiny bit of smile, but there's that intention where she's just kind of like chilling mm -hmm. and that's super cool. Um, a couple things that I would tweak, you know, going going forward is yes. uh, her 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 left hand is too far forward on her chin. So mm -hmm. if if you pulled it back a little bit, more of her face would come forward. Right now, because of the side of her palm is very very bright. So pulling it back um, under the chin a little bit more, the light would fall off, and that wouldn't be so bright. <clears throat> And then, and then whoever did the clothing styling did a great job, except for that left cuff. Oh, yeah, I know that was bugging me too. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I know. That's the, those are the things that you only see when you're in, you know, processing. You're like, oh, I should have got yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 I see a lot of those things only because I used to do school portraits for dances and stuff, and I oh. used to do a lot of these. And after you do a couple thousand of these and you, and you, you know, correct yourself over and over, then the next one, it's like when you do the pose, you're like, oh no, sweetie, I need your hand here. And then you've eliminated that, that step later. Right. And you look for collars and cuffs and, and once you've, once you see it, you don't unsee those things anymore. You know, I know, so. I know. Yeah. But it was fun. It's a fun shoot. Yeah. I, I got to say, what, though, man. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? But what's important is the mask of her face, right? Like that's mm -hmm. when it when it comes to, you know, as a dad, right? Like you're not you're not seeing the pumpkin so much or her hands so much. You're looking at her eyes yep. and the mask of her face. And that really is what's most important. Everything yep. else is just secondary to that. So. Yeah, as the as the dad photographer, I'm looking at nailing the focus on her eyes and and her expression. Those are the main things that I'm like, okay, I got to get this, right. you know, because you don't want to miss that expression and you don't want to get the expression and have a soft photo with a great expression. So, you know, you got if you can nail those two things, a lot of the other things are fixable, you know, later. Like for example, that light, right. because I was only working with one light and the way it was positioned and the fact that her the palms of her hand are lighter than her skin tone, there was a lot of like you said, on the on her skin underneath um her chin on the palm of her hand, that was bright. I, I had to do a significant amount of work to even bring it down to that level. So, mm, yeah. yeah, so it was that, you know, that's what you get when you're working with it. And my modifier is a 27, I think it's a 27 inch, maybe 32 um, inch uh, Octobox up into the up into subject right. So, yeah. you know, that that was the light source in, you know, it was it's relatively close to her, but still it's a relatively small light source. And when you're doing a portrait like this, you want, especially of a, of a young female, you want flattering light. So it was, mm -hmm. you know, took, took a lot of, a little bit of work and I should, I'll, I'll post the before too. So folks can see what it looked like before processing. Yep. But it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. This no, it's great. It's great image. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right, that's it for beautiful little Cameron. Bye, Cameron. <laughs> All right, next shot up is Michael Rhino. Oh, yeah, I know where that's at. 
Oh, Reynolds says, uh, for this week's open category, here is one of the final morning during a recent trip to Grand Teton National Park. Also, a special thank you to Rob Knight for showing me this spot a couple of days earlier. Yeah, Rob's a rock star. Yeah. Look at that. that Look is at those colors. Cool. It's so pastel -y. I know. I know. That's a, that's such a beautiful location, too. That's just, I love those fall colors in there. I, you know, the... This is where I always struggle with these landscape and there's a reflection shot. Um, and I would love to hear, you know, what Rob thinks as well, you know, being a landscape photographer is, is I feel like, you know, landscapes always compete with the main image um, sometimes and, and, and we need to try to get them to add to the main image. And in this case, I think that everything above the horizon is magical and everything below the horizon is more of an add to that. And so, you know, I think that if you if you crop it off from the bottom, I know you're losing the reflection, but save the trees, the shoreline, and you can crop that guy out on the right. And I think that would be for I think the cleaner image. And then it, then it's all then then the mountain and the sky becomes a hero. Yeah, right, right. And I didn't even notice that guy over there. <laughs> until mm -hmm. you said it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not see that? That's an unnatural shape. I was looking at the mountain. I look at the mountain and the tree line and the reflections. You know, I was looking over here uh, at like the smoky kind of area, like wondering what's happening there. I think I was distracted by all that beauty versus, right. you know, look, looking at the shadowy figure off to the right there. <laughs> <laughs> Slender man over there looking at this view. Yeah. Well, Yes, but that's a good that's a good exercise because if you were to say, oh, I want to go ahead and print this and you print it, you know, 30, 40, 60 inches and then there's that guy in there. Yeah. And especially if this is for a client and that guy's in there, uh, you just ate an image. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. So check that stuff out. But I do love I do love this shot. I, I really do. I, I, I'm I'm a real fan of just below the horizon and up. I think that's where this image really shines. And that gives us even more focus on those beautiful trees that are, mm -hmm. you know, on, on the shoreline on the right hand side, where right now we just have a lot of stuff going on in the foreground that we really don't need there. Yeah. Yeah. This definitely looks like one of those shots that you'd see in the living room above a couch or you know, just a giant print again with a very nice frame on it. <laughs> really sad. Yeah, potentially, potentially. I would. I think this would look great as a metal print, as a really large. Oh, you know, I want to do print. that. I think I'm going to do that with that Cameron shot. I'm going to have it printed metal because she has all that reflective stuff on. I want to see mm -hmm. what, what a metal print would do for that. Yep. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you, Michael Rhino, and thank Good you, job. Rob Knight, for showing Michael Rhino that location. Yeah. All right. Next shot this is Nora Zanotinus. Nora says, still standing, tree skeleton scorched by the desert sun. Wow. Yeah. I love this shot. This is I do so too. Cool. I do too. And, and, you know, this is one of those images that really, really speaks to simplicity. Um, and the idea that we know immediately what it is. It draws us in. It allows us to build stories around it without it, without the image being too loud. You know, it allows us to kind of develop around it. And I just, I love the subtlety of this. I really do. Yeah. 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 Right there. It's very, it's, yeah, it's, it's almost abstract, but not, you know, and it just kind of draws you into when I first looked at the thumbnail, it drew me in because I, I did a shot uh, that's kind of, in this vein in Yo was it Yosemite Yellowstone? Yeah, it was Yellowstone. And there was snow on the ground and there was a stark looking tree like this, just sort of lonely all alone. So I did a shot like that. It was in this it was snow. It was a snow scene. So when I saw this one, mm. I was like, oh, is this like that snow scene? And then to find out that it's actually a desert scene, it's you know, it's actually really cool. I right. like it. I even right. like the border, the ragged border on this one. So I think it yeah. really works yeah, with good. the tree and the organic nature of the tree and you know, it just, it ties it all together. I really like that. Yeah. It, it scenes, it scenes like this are always really fun because, you know, they really play into our imagination. Um, on, on images like this, when you have really challenging lighting situations, you know, it might be a good idea to shoot an HDR or shoot a couple images uh, just to keep that subtle highlight detail in, in the foreground. Because I can clearly, you know, we can see where it's, it's overexposed. Maybe that's mighty, but um, 
try to maintain the detail in those highlights. You know, it looks like we're losing it a little bit, but not much. Not so, too much. Not too much at all. No, not too much. Well done. I love it. Yeah, very well done. All right. Thank you, Nora. All right. Next shout up is Mark Harris. Mark says, uh, orange chair made during a private one-on-one as part of a well-run group session at Raccoon Creek Creative Studio in New Jersey. Although early afternoon, the natural light through windows in this space was beautiful. The model is Luna May. And uh, Mark was asking if I'm not streaming this episode because of this image. Uh, no, that was not the reason why we did not stream mm. this episode. It was because I just didn't want to stream this <laughs> episode. Uh, and uh, But on that note, this would probably likely be a not safe for Twitch image, which is another right. reason why I'm reconsidering the whole streaming on Twitch, at least for these critiques thing, because it, it limits what we can show or adds to the editing on the end. And I don't want to limit our group from submitting whatever photos they feel like. So. Right. Right. So, so that said, what do, you, what do you think of this portrait? I like it. This is like a uh, one light setup, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is this is natural light. So it's coming through a window, it looks like. So I, mm-hmm. I just I love that that direction of light. I love the, the pose, you know, the delicateness of the hands and the feet, um, the tilt of the head. I, I really dig all that. So I think it's great. We do have some light challenges where you know you've got light falling on her chest falling on her right arm at the same brightness that her as her face and so i would suggest you know you pull that down slightly but it also looks like that the light on her legs was pulled down a lot mm-hmm. and to me that creates this imbalance it, it doesn't feel natural to me because there's enough light to make shadows on the floor but there's but it's not her legs are very dark and that just doesn't feel natural. So, you know, we want we want that light to be balanced, but lead us to our to our subject's face. Yeah. How would you do that in Capture One? Um, if you just want to like take the highlights on her her, you know, camera left arm or, or her right arm as she sits there and on her chest and knock those down, you know, or rather the, the highlights on her whole upper body. How would you knock those down? Is it just a dodge and burn? Or do you have you have a more sophisticated technique? Well, you could do a dodge and burn and then just bring down the whites and the highlights. Um, what I really like to do now is grab, through the luminosity mask, uh, grab the, the, the brightness range that I want to work with, select that as a mask. Then I can tweak it with sliders to the point to where then I need to brush it in. Right? Oh, so, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you can really select that tone. You can taper off the toe of the of the part that you're trying to clip out, and you could really, really get a nice grab on those highlights. And you may not need to use a brush at all. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting, and, and that's that's a that's a contrast, no pun intended, from how you do it in Lightroom, right? Because in Lightroom, you could either right. try to pull down the highlight slider and then work that way, or use uh, an adjustment brush and load that brush with negative exposure or sure. negative brightness and try to target just those areas and then drag that down. So, but much less precise than what you'd be able to do in Capture One, right? Yeah, and you know, one of the other things that I found to be very useful in Capture One is just just go in and look at an image and drag this the, the luminosity slider just to clip it it really shows you where the tones are. So for example, in this one, as you start to drag the highlight, I mean, I'm sorry, the shadow clipping, and you'll see what highlights are left, you'll notice at some point, her face is going to start to, the mask is going to remove from her face, which means that you're going to see the brightest areas are not her face. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way for you to look at an image and say, okay, where am I drawing attention via the bright spots, right? Specularly, where am I drawing attention? So, yeah, but I, I do, yeah, being able to grab the luminosity and the color. Oh, my God, color masking. You could change the color of her outfit. Yeah, no or that problem. chair. That could be a red Morpheus chair if you wanted to. <laughs> well, that would be tough. Uh, because that the would color be tones are similar, red hair. Yeah, skin, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it yeah. should be a red You could still do it. Chair. You could mask out. You can mask out that area and target the yeah. chair, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah, it's really not too nice. hard to do. Yes. Cool. Cool shot. 
right. Thank you, Mark Harris, for that one. Eric Pronsky's up next. Eric says, curious cattle. These guys just happened to line up nicely as I got out of my vehicle. Image taken in Western Ireland with a panoramic crop. Nice. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> what you looking at? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is that is awesome. That is really awesome. I, I dig that a lot. Yeah, that's that's really fun. Um, here's a question. You know, here's a question for you, Troy Miller. Do cows in Ireland moo with an Irish accent? Well, of course they do. <laughs> what does it sound like? <laughs> I'm not even tempting. I'm not even going to attempt that. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Trying Good to step job. me up. I see that what you're was, doing. That was that was leading you down a road of destruction. <laughs> it looked like a strike ball, but it was a it was a foul ball. I just let that one fly over the plate. <laughs> yes, yes. So, what do, what do you think about the shot of these these Irish speaking cows? Um, you know, I love it in color, but I think it would also, also look really good in black and white. I think black and white would be a real winner with this one. And I would probably take off half the sky. I don't, I don't think that, you know, pretty much a little above the, the telephone pole back there. We don't really need much more than that. So maybe half the sky, maybe a third of the sky. Mm -hmm, Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Because it's a, it's a balance to the foreground. Right. It, it's not a it's not a majority part of this image. You know, the houses are. That's great. Maybe that's the ranch or something. Um, but it's really about these cows and the green pasture they're isolated in, which is just which is awesome. Yeah. You know, when I look at this shot, I think of this this cow in the back here. See that guy standing there yeah. looking directly at the camera ominously. It looks like he's the leader. <laughs> Uh, or she yeah. is the leader back there <laughs> in sending the other cows out. <laughs> like, you go see. You go check. Go go see with it. Report back to me. Report back to me what you find with that guy <laughs> with that thing in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my brain works. Sorry. <laughs> oh, but, my gosh. Cool shot, though. Love it. Love the open category, man. Yeah. All right. Michael DeRay is up next. Michael DeRay says... Ooh, uh, Lomography still life. Olympus camera toy, 12 millimeter F8 lens out of the camera JPEG. Only edit was border, a uh, slight level adjust. May not be perfect, but fun to do. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Very Explosion cool. of color. Look at that. Yeah, that's neat. You know, this is... Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with the, with the crop. I always... I always personally struggle with things floating without mm. any any foundation, right? And so you can fix that or, or, or sort of tease the brain by having a very narrow gap of space underneath as opposed to equal space, right? Because it feels like there's floating in midair. So I would probably have cropped this more horizontal with less space at the bottom and slightly more space at the top. And then it would feel like it's like it's sitting on something. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually right. Yeah, if there's if it's not equidistant, which it kind of isn't, but if it was more if you accentuated the space on top versus on the bottom, yeah, for sure. And you could on a on a shot like this where the background is completely black, that's just a select move exercise, right? Yeah. I mean, you could if you want to keep the frame square, yeah, you could definitely do that. If you just wanted to crop it differently, I mean, you could go a little more horizontal um Mm -hmm. and leave a little more space at the top it's just it's just an illusion for the brain it feels like if it's sitting down on something if if it if it's lower in the frame and there's less space at the bottom our brains just we're naturally accustomed to seeing things sitting on you know tables and counters and things like that so it's a dang theory of gravity (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 it's all a theory So, so what in this shot would you not eat troy uh i would eat all of that I like oh. all of those things. There's no oh, tomatoes okay. in there, so I'm good. Okay, Phew. good. You are you. Yeah. There's, there's hope that you're you know <laughs> a, a, a normal food consumer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I can eat it raw or cooked. I don't care. I like it both ways. So, oh geez, I'm not eating. Oh, I guess raw mushrooms. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. Salads. Yeah. All day long. It's good stuff. Just yeah, make just, sure they don't have uh, that psilocybin stuff in them, and you'll be okay. <laughs> Right, right. You'd be walking on the moon. All right, Michael DeRay. Thank you, sir. 
Next shout up is from Karen Sweeney. Karen says, uh, entry for open critique, Skeletal Angelica. Nice. Nice. Good title. I like Mm -hmm. your titles. Yeah. I, I know this isn't a dandelion seed, but it looks like one, right? Like, like it's looks like one of those single dandelion seeds, which is kind of cool. Um, I like how it's all flared out and everything. This is, uh, I love the abstract. The cropping is great. I like it in black and white. I think it, I think this is the kind of image that works exceptionally well in, in black and white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the contrast just pops it out of the background. Yes. Yes. I do you have do. on your list, on your critique list of topics, uh, anything on there uh, that's macro? Well, can we everything. I don't have macro specifically, but anything could be macro. Um, yeah. Well, I was thinking because you can't make the assumption that everyone has a macro lens. So. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was that was my call. <clears throat> well, that was my thought, not my call, but that was my thought. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my my only suggestion to this image, and we can't really do anything now, is I just wish that it it had a greater sense of sharpness throughout the image. Um, it feels like really the only there's only a couple that are really sharp, and then you know they kind of fade off. And something like this, it really would be great if those tips were much sharper. But either way, I mean, I, I just being nitpicky at that point. Yeah, I mean everything's subjective, right? So even well, not everything. <laughs> well, yeah, not tomatoes everything. Tomatoes are nasty. Tomatoes are nasty. That's not subjective. Oh my. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> now you're baiting me. See, tomatoes are delicious, especially cherry tomatoes with a little salt and pepper on them. You're, uh, oh, perfect, perfect. Nope. Unless they're in salsa, they're useless. <laughs> Not true. Not true. Have you ever had a BLT? Have you heard of that? You know what the BLT no, they're, they're is? That's nasty. That's nasty. Ugh. Ugh. All right. We're gonna have to I'm gonna have to throw a poll up about that in the community. We'll see how much of the community thinks tomatoes are nasty. I'm gonna guess <laughs> one. <laughs> You're right. You're probably right. <laughs> one person. All right, cool. Thank you, Karen Sweeney, for the shots. And Karen, Karen is in Ireland, right? I think Karen. Correct uh, me if I'm wrong. I believe you are in Ireland. If you are, you can confirm or deny if cows do speak with an Irish accent or <laughs> move with an Irish accent. <laughs> That's your mission to verify that. <laughs> all right. Next shout up is from Lamb. Uh, okay, I can't read all that, Lamb, but. Uh, Lamb says, my entry for the theme opens. Rock drilling is ongoing uh, and large amount of super fine rock dust are thrown out by, are spewing out from the hole and blown aside by the large flexible blower. Let's take a look at the shot. Wow. Blown aside. Blown right at the operator. Of course. (laughs) Poor guy. Yeah. Perfect design right there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's what, and I'm trying to zoom in to see if you know if he's he's wearing a mask but it it looks like it's a handkerchief it doesn't even look like it's a proper mask so yeah that's that fine dust can be so 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 bad as you can see it covering everything around it yeah not very friendly to avioli no no this is great this is a great image this is of of all the images that Lamb has has submitted, this is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I love the black and white treatment. It is very 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 simple. We don't have any distractions, you know, within the frame. Like everything to tell the story is in the frame. It's inside that crop, and I just love that the the top of the cab is a little bright. Mm. I would. Mm-hmm. I would prefer to see that the dust being blown was the brightest because that to me feels like that's the hero of the image. But yeah, it's a great image. There's yeah. there's so much in there. Yeah, and yeah, I, I like it too. I like I like the processing of it, and I like the fact that everything just feels like it's covered in like a eighth of an inch of dust, right? Mm-hmm. And, and therefore, it's that dust <clears throat> is giving a commonality throughout the whole image. And because of the image itself, because of the subject of the image, which is that dust. So yeah, I, I dig it. Right, right. And this is this isn't this is also another image to sort of um, highlight 
that, that that simplicity is best. The simpler that you can get the image inside your frame, the better that it conveys to the viewer. And oftentimes we can't do that photojournalistically. Sometimes you can't do that or it's not not required for the story. But like for what we're doing and what we're looking at for us to get the, the sense of the image, um, cropping in nice and tight really does work. Yeah. 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 If, the, if one thing that I've, you know, I kind of knew, but you, you've hammered home over the, you know, the last couple hundred episodes <laughs> um, <laughs> is, is that idea. And we, we talked about this. Let me put the camera on us for a second. We talked about this. Uh, we've talked about this a lot, even from the very beginning is like shots need a hero in them. Right. Right. For the most part, it is not a hard and fast rule, but for the most part, you, your, your shots need a hero. And most often that hero is the brightest subject in the, sh in the shot. And also right. if you crop in a little bit, the shot gets more interesting because you remove those other characters and focus in on the story that you're, you as the photographer or the artist is trying to tell. Um, and I, I think, you know, as we look through these images, we're seeing more and more of that, of people that, you know, yeah. <clears throat> portraiture notwithstanding, but these more environmental shots, people are, looking at them and seeing their where's the subject and how do i emphasize that and de-emphasize everything else oh yeah yeah the, the, then there's the science of evidence-based design which is how colors and shapes and forms affect us and it's psychographics it's the it's the idea that certain shapes and colors convey certain meanings to us subconsciously Mm -hmm. So the more that we understand that and the more that we can put that into our images, the better that we can tell stories with those images, right? It's like a, it's like me writing a novel versus Ernest Hemingway, um, who has a much better command of language than I do. He's going to use better words that convey better mental images. And that's what we're doing with light and yeah. composition and shape. You really know? good point. Yeah, really good point. Because, yeah, you take an Ernest Hemingway or Steinbeck or somebody, and then you contrast their writing style with a Stephen King, right? Who is evoking a whole different kind of feeling yeah. with the words and the choice of words that he puts down. Yeah, so. Yeah, but, yeah, they're, but they're masters at the language and not just the words, but the cadence of the words and the, t and, and, and the tone and the culture that those words are used in yeah. make a difference yeah. too. Yeah, the so, zeitgeist at the time of when those yep. words were written could mean com something completely different. You know, like right. Mark Twain's writing, if he wrote something these days, it probably <laughs> would not go over well. Right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Mark Twain would get doxxed immediately. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Yeah, this is very true. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. So back to our critique here. Thank you, Lamb, for the shot. Very thought provoking. All right, next shot up is from Craig Stamfley. And Craig says, uh, Birds on a Wire. Yeah, we talked about this one a little bit during the during the member mixer this past Friday. Oh, which cool. you missed, by the way, because you're out doing, like, making money and what? taking pictures. <laughs> I technically didn't miss it. I popped in for <laughs> like You did. Three you made minutes. a cameo. You made a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. It was right during the time I was supposed to be eating my dinner. So I felt that was appropriate to run there off. There you go. Perfect. I'm glad yeah. you made time for it. That was good. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Um, so what did you guys talk about this image? What did you come up with? Um, I think what I said, uh, I was drinking at the time, so I have to remember. <laughs> so it's a member mixer. Come on. Uh, yeah. I think what I said, I love the, the, the uh, leading line, the depth, the, the, you know, sort of these guys running back into the background. If I didn't say it, I was thinking, I love how all the telephone poles are leaning generally in the same direction, except for that one with the birds on it. Right. So it's the biggest one. And the only one that's that's not leaning sort of to the right uh, for the most part is that big one. That's the hero of the shot. And just like we just talked about. Yeah. Every shot needs a hero. That's our hero right there. Right. Yeah. You know, and every image has a primary and secondary hook or hero. And in this case, you know, it's those those two birds that you don't really see first. Right. I think your primary is the telephone poles and the leading lines. You're like, that's really cool. And as you scan the scene, you're like, oh, my gosh, there's two birds hanging up there. And oh, my gosh, look, there's a third bird in the back. 
just chilling. And those little tiny elements, like the birds, add so much to the image. I just, mm -hmm. I just love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's really cool. Do you see any dr distracting elements in here? You're the the king of finding distractions. <sighs> I, like if I, you were, if this well, was your shot, would what would you have removed, if anything? I I don't think there's anything that I I would have removed. I think I'm okay with all the lines leading. I like that they're not, you know, at any direct angles to the to the frame. I like how everything is off. Um, it's probably a little bit of a weird nitpick, but in the lower left hand corner, right where that can is. I don't like that white thing that's covering the cable. Um, I probably oh, would have taken here. that out. Yeah, just that white. It, it's probably, I don't know what it is. It's probably a, something covering the end of the cable, but I can see that. I, I It's the brightest thing in the image, and I see it overall. I would just take it out. Um, mm -hmm. Would you take that whole cable out or just, or just knock, the, <coughs> knock, the, knock it down a couple of values? I would fix it. I would actually mm -hmm. grab a piece of cable from the right and I would replace it in on the left behind the can and make it look natural. I just, mm -hmm. I just don't like that, that white thing there. So, but I, I, and I do appreciate the angle that this is shot from this, this looks to me like this is something, you know, where Craig got really low to the ground and tried for a, a unique perspective. And that makes a difference, you know, cause the foreground is there. Um, you can see the heat waves, you know, that distortion going off in the lower right hand or just off to that whole side. Yeah. So it really tells a good story from that angle and it hides anything that may have been in the foreground. Um, would you, and this is, this is me just, you know, in nitpickery mode, would you have removed this guy right here? See that little thing off to the left is it, whether it be a cloud or whatever yeah. that is, that doesn't I, bother you. Cause in previous images, oh. you said things that are kind of, you know, cut off by the edge of the frame, you would remove would them. I'm curious. Definitely taking that out. Yeah, I was, okay. you know, I was, I was limiting my, I was, I was picking my battles <laughs> on what. <laughs> but it's a fantastic image though. I mean, even with, even with yeah. that thing left in there and the cable, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's a great shot. Yeah. And it's incredibly strong. And I, and I will say, you know, I, I have a strong motivation to remove the can but at the same time, because it draws my attention and it's part of the sort of the, the wonkiness of the image, it makes me want to leave it in, right? And that's why I see that white thing down there. Mm -hmm. But the rest of, you know, everything in this image is, is really wonderful, so. Yeah, really good work, I like it. All right, Craig Stanfley, always surprising. All right, next shot up is from Armando. <clears throat> Armando says, wait for it. He says, last Saturday was Worldwide Photo Walk Day from Scott Kelby. I walked for seven hours around uh, the downtown of Sao Paulo. Okay, let's take a look at this. Bring oh, this right, right up. All right, Mighty. It's so weird. Mine did the same thing. It's it's so weird. Yeah, that's weird. Must be a big image. Hey, look at that shot. Look at that. That's cool. I know what you're going to say, uh, though. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let yeah. you say it, though. I'm not going to channel you. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> it, 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 uh, well, what, what I think is what I think needs fixed is the buildings. Yeah. They're leaning. Yeah. yeah. The left building is is leaning. So I, I it feels like it feels like um, you tried to correct the perspective and over distorted the left side mm -hmm. unintentionally because it's it does not it feels bent mm -hmm. yeah yeah it feels bad it but you know and this feels like one of those images where like on the right side here these are very perpendicular to the edge of the frame right they match yeah and then you move off to the left and this one starts curving in a little bit and then when you get over here it's really curving in it's yeah. obvious because it's so perpendicular and parallel rather on the right side on the left side this becomes even more obvious so which is easily fixed with with the distortion right you could have distorted that a little bit to yeah. fix that yeah and I, and I would say that you could actually crop this in in between the two light poles that we have on the right and the left 
crop mm-hmm. vertically. And I think, I think you get actually a better image because then you don't have as much building on the right quadrants, right on the right and the left. Yeah. And the path will come out even more. And I love the fact that there's a person there. Mm-hmm. Um, I will admit that person doesn't look right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have a sense that Armando dropped that person in there. Mm. Uh, no, because no, of scale? I, I zoomed in. It does. I, it's, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. And I only say that because I know Armando might do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> so He has superpowers you know, to do that. <laughs> Uh, no, it definitely, if I, if I zoom in, it definitely looks right. But, um, yeah, I just, I, without the person in there, it wouldn't work the same, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause a person gives it a scale. And then also just one, one tip to throw out there. Like if you're, you're doing a shot like this with all these vertical lines in there that need to be straight, like, you know, Steven Starf, Sharf level straight, you know, then, yeah. then a quick command R, uh, and then drag guides out right so that you can make sure that all your vertical lines are in fact vertical and horizontal lines are in fact horizontal and if you had done that if you had pulled a guide out on that right building kind of along the right edge of the building and then one on the left it would have been obvious what what needed not not only that they needed to be corrected but how to correct them because then you do a distort and just match the vertical lines up perfectly with your guides right so everything is vertical or just crop it off or just crop it off if but it, even if yeah, you didn't crop I mean, it off those the grid of those windows would still have gotten you Troy Miller <laughs> you still <would've>. yeah <laughs> yeah but not as much they, not they, as they much right yeah not as much yeah what a great image i i just i really dig that yeah that's really cool yeah this is fun this so is fun. many good this images this is a socially distanced sao paulo <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> i bet that one character has a mask on too no. All right. Thank you, Armando. I can't tell. Yeah, well, you'll never tell. All right. Next shot up. Uh, second to last shot is from Steve Van Sickle. Oh, infrared. Steve says, and we talked about this one in the critique as well, or in the in the mixer, I believe as well. With the proper conversion plus filter, it's fall foliage all the time, or foliage time when I say it is. Yes. Look at that. Yeah. Feels very, feels definitely feels very alien. It yeah. feels like science fiction book cover. Yeah. 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 It really does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I like it. I love that red in the background. Um, I, I would probably have taken the, the water to more white and mm, taken the pop blue out. out. Yeah. Well, yeah, cause it would have it would have sold the, the the reality of it a little bit more right like right now it looks like you took a fall foliage color and blue and made the water blue as opposed to there's just this beautiful fall foliage um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it looks infrared to me because i shoot infrared so i i see that but i think to to sell it even a little bit more is maybe take some of the blue out of the water and bring that up um the brightness up slightly too, just to make it pop a little bit more. Sure. Yeah. I agree. What do you, what do you think of the crop overall? You know, I like it mostly, uh, you know, and and I'm sure everybody who's heard me say it so many times, but I I really struggle with space that, that we don't need. And I feel like we don't need that reflection. I I, I think that it's just a, a ghostly highlight that draws our attention. And I think if we crop it off like half of the bottom, leave that, that little rock in, I think we do the I think we do the image better, mm-hmm. you know. There, the, it draws there's you no into, reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it draws you into the subject, which is the in this case probably the waterfall. Especially if the waterfall was white, it it makes that more of the subject versus it the waterfall itself competing with its reflection. Correct, and that's always the challenge, specularly or visually, for us is that we stand there and we hear the water and and it smells amazing. Hopefully, and 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 you see that reflection, and our brains just take it all in. And then when you photograph it, like you want to capture that reflection, but does it really add? And the hardest thing is to crop that out mm-hmm. because it looks so beautiful when you're standing there, but in a frame, it it doesn't really work sometimes so yeah yeah cool 
cool shot though infrared oh yeah there's a, there's been an infrared movement lately started yes. by you troy miller <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i am happy for it yep yep all that light all right and our last but not least shot actually you know what let me reload real quick to make sure there were no last yeah people sneaking in uh they created yeah i think we're good i think we got everyone okay last but not least shot is by peter levshin peter shot this with his a7r4 fun day out in palmdale with mr colvin very nice yeah look at that was that was that thing lit or did they throw a strobe behind that that sphere peter lit it he he has some underwater lights that he put behind it uh to light it so nice yeah yeah i i just i think it's i think it's spectacular um Mm -hmm. it and peter knows this because him and i have already talked about it uh one of my one of my couple of my challenges with this image is the reflection in this case is getting cropped off at the bottom the shadowy reflection Mm -hmm. and it needs to stay in because it's 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 part of the subject and i think with this image i think if you bring the reflection and put the horizon as you will right dead center and the ball dead center create that symmetry i think it would work for this you know um and then the human form across the top is kind of what breaks the symmetry right because that's really your subject not not the other stuff so it's sort of a play on shape and that highlight of course is that that highlight down there is too bright too bright it is a little bit bright yeah it's a little bit uh it draws you oh it draws you away from the subject which is which is our figure yeah and i like flat images um but i think this is too flat you know in the sense that if that highlight was subtle and the rest of the image was subtle, then I could go, then I could, I could buy into it. But I feel like because the tones of the image are flat and then you got that highlight around the ball, that's just so specularly hot that it sort of betrays the rest of the image. And so I need some, some balance in there. I don't know. Exa- I'd have to play with it, but I think I, I want to see some more. Yeah. It I definitely draws you in, of. though. Makes you think. This has a has a. I don't know if you're old enough to remember the the show Logan's Run. Remember Logan's oh, yeah. Run? This, yeah. This has a Logan's Run feel about it for some reason. <laughs> Does it? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. How old? How old was it before you got terminated in Logan's Run? Like thirty? I think it was like twenty five. Twenty four. Twenty four. <laughs> twenty four. Twenty five. Yeah, it was super young. I remember thinking at the time, like, that's pretty old. Okay. <laughs> I know they've lived a life already. <laughs> Who are they complaining about? Yeah. 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 Well, cool. Peter Levshin, thank you for that, my friend. All right. Uh, I have a favorite. That's Which, my favorite. Nora is 30 years old. Is it? Oh, it's 30? I looked it up. Yeah, I looked it up quick. Um, uh, That's my I favorite. Agree. You agree? Okay. I have good. to agree. Yeah, I, I love it. I really do. They, lots of amazing images. This is, it's always hard. You know, it's always hard, but sometimes there's always a clear favorite. Um, this one, this one wasn't, wasn't so clear, but I do, I yeah. do love Nora's. Yeah, yeah, I love it too. I love well it. Congratulations. Done, Congratulations, Nora's Notness. Um, you are our next contestant on The Price is Right. I mean, you are the winner. <laughs> <laughs> you are this week's favorite. What, uh, what is our topic for next week, Troy Miller? flowers 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 all right i may enter this one flowers yep Yep. flowers and that's it yeah flowers could be macro flowers could be flowers on fire uh could be frozen flowers flowers. frozen flowers oh yeah i've done that what about jennifer flowers from the clinton scandal no let's not do that (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Let's, let's flowers botanical. as in botanical. Yeah. <laughs> botanical flowers. And that's F L O W E R S flowers, not flower. Uh Joshua Summerfield. God, right. <laughs> we always have to clarify for this group, don't we? <laughs> Cuz we You do. Know. You do. We have some jokers in here. 
All right. Well, cool. So next week, yeah. uh, next week's topic is flowers or flower. Correct. Uh, yes. The botanical, the botanical kind, not any botanical other version. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Well, off, you know, and they're off, off into the races. You have a week to come up with some awesome botanical flower shots. We'll see what you can come up with. Yeah. There's some Should flowers the- growing in my front yard. So, uh, and I have mm-hmm. a macro lens, so I have a feeling, I feel like, uh, doing a shot or two out there we'll see so how about a little teaser for the for the topic after flowers oh do tell wide angle Ooh. just wide angle so wide angle all yeah. Right. yeah all right yep. i'm in yep. i'm in for that you one got, too you got, I have a wide angle so you got some time right like when you're out shooting for flowers you might find yourself a little wide angle so. Okay, so how how strict are you on wide angle? Like, define that. Because can I use a fisheye? Because it's technically a wide angle, but it's ultra wide. Yeah. yeah. So that well, works. think of it. Think of it or this panorama. way. The topic. Can I do a panorama with a with a long focal length and stitch them together to make a wide angle shot? You can, but remember, <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna be competing against other images that may use the term wide angle more appropriately to tell a story that is more inviting as opposed to just trying to skirt around the definition <laughs> so it's, it's not skirting it's just being precise come on <laughs> All right, cool. All right, flowers for this coming week, which we'll record. Oops, sorry. We'll record that show on the 19th of October. And yep. then the following critique that we will record, you know, assuming we still have a planet on the 26th of 26th, October. Yep. Right before Hollow's Eve. Oh, by the way, uh, that week, our member mixer will be on the 30th, which is. Oh, cool. Hallow's Eve Eve, right? So nice, interesting. So we should have everyone dress up for that, since no one can go to any Halloween parties or anything. <laughs> he, can, <laughs> he can at least dress up for the the Halloween theme Twip Pro member mixer. We'll see right. people show up. In. Right. All right. right. Well, cool. Well, this was a, this was a little bit long. This is an ultra long one because they always are when we do the open the open yeah. sort of topic, but we expected it. So thank you everyone for submitting. Once again, next week is flower, botanical flowers, and the following week is wide angle. And we'll see what you guys can do. Get a head start, do your homework early, but don't submit your wide angle shots before we do the critique for the botanical flower right. shots because you run the chance of us missing them. Submit them during the week when we're, when we're doing the critique. Yep. All right. Cool. Good Any uh, parting shots, Troy Miller, before we end this one? Stay safe. Go have a good time. Go shoot some images. All right. Get out there. Get out there. Shoot. Make some shots. And we will yep. see you guys next week. Take care. You got it. This is Twitter.